The Giant and the Shoemaker. Once there was a shoemaker who earned his living by travelling from one village to the next mending shoes. The villagers always paid him for his service, however if they hadn't enough money, they would give him some cottage cheese or a basket of fruit, sometimes a small animal or even a bird. Every morning he would make his way to the village with a bag full of tools and a small pouch of food. In order to get to the village faster, the shoemaker would often cut across the woods. The villagers used to avoid the woods because they believed that there lived a giant ogre who devoured humans. These villager rumours did not really bother the shoemaker and he kept using the woods in order to reach his various destinations. But one evening, as the shoemaker was on his way back home, he came face to face with the evil giant. Hey, you! Yes, you human! exclaimed the giant. How do you do, my friend? answered the shoemaker politely. What are you capable of doing? asked the giant. I am capable of doing all that you can do answered the shoemaker confidently and without the slightest fear. Ha 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 ha! The ogre could not suppress his laughter when he heard this puny shoemaker declare that he was as strong as a giant. We'll see about that, challenged the giant. Look, are you capable of doing this? The giant picked up a stone from the ground and crushed it to powder with his fist. That's easy, smiled the shoemaker. Without letting the giant notice, he reached into his pouch and snatched a piece of cottage cheese. Then he bent to the ground pretending to pick up a stone. Watch this, said the shoemaker. And he squashed the soft cheese until drops of water trickled down his fist. The giant was ever so astonished, because although he was very strong, he was not so smart. Dear me, thought the giant, I have never seen anyone draw water out of a stone. But he did not give up, for he could not accept such a defeat. Now, let's see if you can throw a stone as far as I can, boasted the giant. He picked up another stone from the ground and flung it so hard that it reached the trees at the far end of the woods. I can do better than that, smiled the shoemaker. And once again, he reached deep inside his pouch, where earlier on he had placed a small bird given to him by one of the villagers. He pretended to pick up a stone from the ground and tossed the bird into the air. The bird was finally set free and he flew far, far away until he disappeared into the sky. The defeated giant gave up and without uttering another word went back home sulking. When the giant related the whole story to his mother, she was very suspicious of the shoemaker. Beware the human, she warned him because he is smart. And if you are not careful, he will destroy you. But the giant did not pay any attention to his mother's warning. And the next morning, he set out looking for the shoemaker. Hey, you human! greeted the giant as he spotted the shoemaker. I can uproot an entire tree with my bare hands. The giant clasped his arms around the tree trunk pulled it out of the ground, exposing its roots. The shoemaker did not appear surprised. He took out a rope from his basket and started tying up all the trees. What are you doing? exclaimed the giant, utterly confused. I am going to pull out all the trees in the woods, answered the shoemaker. No, no, hold it, hold it, leave everything as it is, yelled the giant. If you do that, 
I won't have anywhere to live. And once again, the giant had to accept his defeat and go back home sulking. Every time, his mother would warn him. Beware the human, because he is smart and he will destroy you. At long last, the giant decided to get rid of the shoemaker before it was too late. So the next time they met, the giant asked him, Hey human, where do you live? I'll show you, answered the shoemaker. And after a good walk along the meadow, the shoemaker showed him a small cottage. Here's where I live, explained the shoemaker. The giant took one look and off he went. That evening, the shoemaker climbed up a tree next to the cottage and hid in its branches. At midnight, he saw the giant approaching, carrying a huge boulder. The giant lifted the boulder and dropped it down heavily, crashing the cottage beneath it. Satisfied, the giant ogre burst out laughing and went back home. Ha 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 ha! But the next day, the giant came face to face with the shoemaker. How can this be? exclaimed the giant. Didn't you feel anything last night? Mm, to tell you the truth, I did feel something, the shoemaker answered. Probably a little plaster came off the ceiling and fell on my face while I was asleep. The giant was very puzzled and lost the words. He could not accept the fact that this tiny human being was stronger than him. You see that rock, said the giant, showing him a huge boulder. Are you capable of lifting it on your shoulder? I can do much better than that, laughed the shoemaker. And all of a sudden, the shoemaker shot to the edge of the cliffs and started yelling. All you villagers, get out of your homes! Leave your houses at once! Dear me, whatever are you going to do? asked the giant, totally confused. I am going to lift up that mountain and drop it on top of a village. No, no, don't you dare, yelled the giant because he concluded that if the shoemaker demolished the whole village, he would not have any more humans to devour. And on that thought of food, he came up with an idea. Very well, said the giant. You might have defeated me in strength, but you will never beat me in food, for I can surely eat more than you can. Let's have lunch together and we'll see, answered the shoemaker. What would you like to eat? Mmm, ravioli, answered the giant. Very well. Tomorrow we shall have a meal of ravioli, said the shoemaker. The next day, the giant showed up with two large cauldrons and two sacks full of ravioli. They lit a fire and began to cook the ravioli. The shoemaker had a plan. He prepared a leather pouch and secured it around his belly, well hidden beneath his shirt. At noon, the food was ready and they began to eat. The giant gobbled the ravioli by the dozen. With every twelve ravioli the giant devoured, the shoemaker would only eat one and sneak the rest into the pouch. At last, they ate it all. Ha! Ha! I ate more than you! stated the giant, who was completely stuffed with ravioli. Get over yourself! protested the shoemaker. Didn't you see how much I ate? No! I ate more ravioli than you! yelled the giant. Very well, answered the shoemaker. Then... Let's count them. Count them, frowned the giant. How can we count the ravioli if they are inside our belly? Of course we can, laughed the shoemaker. 
It's easy. Look. With a sharp knife, he sliced open the leather pouch and the ravioli spilled to the ground. The giant wanted to show off too. He snatched the knife from the shoemaker and plunged it with all his might into his belly. The giant ogre fell down dead and never more did he devour either ravioli or humans again. <laughs>